Welcome to another episode of R1P NFL's Preview. Um, I am your host, Lever KT, for this episode. We got my boy, A. Steezy, man. I know y'all know Steezy. Steezy does all of our graphics. Uh, he's the executive producer on our college football show. Hey, Steezy, what's goody? Man, I'm good. Uh, I'm out here to talk about my second favorite team today. Okay. Which, you know, times are always number one. They're headed by a lot, but... You know, I like to talk about my Chargers because they got my favorite quarterback. So, right, and I think this, as this a, a as a Ducks fan, I, I I think we all get it. So we got the Washington Football Team versus the Chargers. So let's start off with the Chargers side of things. Um, do you feel like the Chargers had the off season that they needed to build around Justin Herbert, and you know, get them not only just the right players but the right coaching staff as well? Yes, easily. I, this this Chargers off season is amazing. Like mm-hmm. I. Watching this go by, that it makes me jealous because, like, yeah, this is a this is a team that's really they're this rebuild's going perfect. Last year, the Chargers actually, I say, would even had a playoff chance. They had an easy chance for the playoffs last year, just due to how many games they blew and games that they lost by a touchdown or less. Um, I feel like games does not go their way, but mm-hmm. the bright spot last year was your quarterback Justin Herbert mm-hmm. that they dra- they drafted at five. I'm pretty sure. Um, we 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 know the Dolphins. You know they passed them up. Uh, they got Tua. Mm-hmm. Herbert fell to the Chargers at five. Uh, Herbert last year was just as soon as Taylor Taylor came out, Herbert was out there dotting up. He looked amazing. The only problem was I actually Lynn. I couldn't mess with him. I watched <laughs> a lot of Chargers game last year. Lynn was not getting the job done as a coach. So this off season, they knew that they had to get a new coach, and they went out and got Brandon Staley. Mm-hmm. Brandon Staley, we we know Brandon Staley. He's the mastermind, the DC that had the the that was running that Rams defense last year. That was so good. Uh, and I when as soon as I saw this uh this pickup for they get they make him the new head coach of the Chargers, I, I as soon as I saw that I'm like, okay, here we go. The Chargers are going to be a problem next year if they make the right moves free agency wise. Coming into free agency, what they focus on the most was their O line because they wanted to protect they wanted to protect Herbert. Um, and if we're talking about how they do doing that? They did perfect. Right. They got a guy like Matt uh, Matt Fleur. Uh, Matt Fleur has been protecting Big Ben for five plus years. Last year was a little odd for him because he played four years at right tackle, and then last year they moved that left guard new position. It didn't. It, it, it wasn't so well for him. But I think that he's a nice. He's a nice little pickup. Uh, didn't cost too much. Mm-hmm. Then they got a nice little veteran uh, O lineman and uh, Obey uh, Shibi. Mm-hmm. Obey Shibi played for like five teams at this point: Jets, Lions. Can't name them all, but a uh, great veteran presence uh, to the O line. And then the, spe- the biggest sign they had was Corey Lindsay. Corey mm-hmm. Lindsay, they paid the temps all of like sixty plus, uh, sixty plus mil. Big, big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's going to be your main guy um, coming to the O line. Uh, we'll get more in free agency, but then I have to talk about their first overall pick uh, that they got eleven, um, Rashawn Slater. Mm-hmm. You can move anywhere up into that low O line. Rashawn Slater was a it was a pick that I was I thought was very expected right there. Uh and now now you look at the Chargers like they got a whole new look O line. Mm-hmm. Uh, at some times that might be a bad thing, sometimes mm-hmm. it might be a good thing. And I mm-hmm. think with the pickups that they had, it's just gonna be a very, very solid O line. Especially when you got a leader like Lindsay and then some veteran presence mm-hmm. to really work to really work and develop a guy like Rashawn Slater, who I think can be great in this league. Uh other moves they made though, uh they they did lose Hunter Henry. That's a tough one. Uh, Absolutely. It's, it's it's not that's not an easy guy to replace. He was he was very he's very uh pivotal for the offense. Uh they replaced him with a guy like Jared Cook. And do I think Jared Cook is the is on Hunter Henry's level? No, but mm-hmm. I think Jared Cook is a solid tight end. Especially when I know that Herbert's gonna get him Herbert's gonna give him the right uh the, the right throws and I think mm-hmm. that Jared Cook's gonna re, Jared Cook's gonna be fine with this offense. He's a he's a service uh serviceable tight end for the team, especially when he got so much good receivers that he, that that it's not like it's not the biggest problem. Hunter Henry was a very very good tight end, and unfortunately, you guys they just couldn't keep him. The Chargers are kind of like that uh, that they don't franchise tag players and they just let them walk. That's unfortunate. But I overall the free agency was amazing to me. And then when you got to the draft, obviously I said Rashawn Slater was to me a, a he was an A plus fit, not A plus, but A minus A around there. I love that pick. They needed to get a line right there. Uh, protect Herbert. Ch- Bengals, you should have did that. Just saying. Right, right. Uh, second round, they killed it. Uh, 47, they got Asante Samuel Jr. And I've already seen Asante Samuel just beast, just tearing it up preseason. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I just I just think this is an amazing pick, especially when you got when the Chargers get Derwin James back this year since he didn't he didn't wasn't able to play up right. to twenty. Right. Uh that that secondary is looking very solid. And I always say that the Chargers have a very underrated secondary. Last mm-hmm. year it was the team was just in kind of in a bad state, but they still were very, very competitive. Uh and getting a guy like Asante Samuel to come up into this this uh, secondary, this corner core, and you have these or have like these really good corners that he can work with and develop. This is an amazing pick, especially you get him on 47. Other guys they got was like Josh Palmer um, from Tennessee. I don't know. I, I would kind of say this is not the best pick at 77 because I know there's better uh, receivers at this time. Yeah. But what, what the receiving core already, they, they got, it's a it's whatever. They, they can go take a chance on a guy like Palmer. And then they also got Trey McKitty uh, tied in from Georgia. This is just another guy that you want to get. You want to make some tight end depth, uh, take a chance on him because you guys just lost Hunter Henry. So Jared Cook, him. Uh, that's gonna be important, and I, I would say coming into the actual game, uh, when, when I'm kind of what I'm seeing is uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about rushing because the O line the O line's new, mm-hmm. and I think they have to evolve the rushing game a little more, especially because I'm calling it out. Austin Eckler's gonna have a uh, Austin a- it's Eckler, mm-hmm. I think it's his last name. Yeah, uh, he's gonna have a career year. Wow, so, that's a bold out. take. He's have a career. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's had five hundred. He's had multiple five hundred yard years. Don't sleep on his twenty nineteen season. Nine hundred receiving yards. Mm. The dude, the dude was out there. He's 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 shown that he can be a very good running back in this league. And I think this year he's gonna he's gonna really mix it up. He's gonna have at least. I'm I'm not gonna say career year like he's gonna have one K one K like a, a CMC in twenty nineteen. Mm. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna have like a he's gonna have like a nice seven fifty. Uh. Uh, 750 to like uh 700 800 receiving our uh, season, and uh, Moon always be talking fancy. I'm telling, I'm telling you, he might be a guy you want to consider a fancy. Uh, because that that's that's going to be huge for them when it comes. So when it comes to the Chargers in their off season, this is mm-hmm. amazing. Um, and uh, Brandon Staley's going to Brandon Staley's going to have this defense playing. I'm going to tell you that he's going to have this defense playing. I think they're going he's going to give uh. He's gonna give Fitzpatrick a hard time, but when it comes to this game, the main guy I'm looking at, the X factor I'm looking at, is Joey Bosa because maybe there's not enough there uh, that they didn't they didn't fo- they focus on the O line. They got mm-hmm. they had a good off season, but I don't feel like they did enough when it comes to the pass rush. Mm-hmm. And that all you got pass rush rise is Joey Bosa. Joey Bosa has to be a big uh, player in this game. He has to be the X factor and get and get pressure on Fitzpatrick and the football team because. If that's not going there, then it's not going to be easy for your corners. But I think if you put a little pressure, your corners are going to go to work. So that's what I'm looking at this game. I know I have, I'm very uh, high on this Chargers uh, offense. And that, that I feel like since they didn't really have a run game last year, they were way, way like air raid pass pivotal. Like, oh, yeah, for sure. It, so so this year, I believe that they have a better run game, especially when your own line is going to be playing amazing. And if, you're, if their own line gives Herbert the amount of time I think they are, Herbert's going to dot up. and. I did, I have I have the Chargers. I'm when we get prediction, but I have I have I think the Chargers are gonna have a a good time with this game. But I'm gonna let you talk about the football team on their side of the All righty. So so before we get to the football team, I, I have a question for you. So larger scope yeah. for for the Chargers. Um, you you like the Staley move? Anthony Lynn as a Buffalo Bill fan, he he holds a special place in all of our hearts yeah. because we we felt like he should have been the guy. Uh, don't get me wrong, to McDermott being connection. I don't think there's a better GM coach connection in the NFL, but we're all rooting for him because we know what happened after the Rex Ryan situation, how well he handled it, how diligently he handled it, and we were rooting for him in San Diego, not only because of him, but Tyrod Taylor as well. But broader scope, as we look at the Chargers, um, and I look at this team as a team that should be pushing for the playoffs, but let's talk specifically AFC West. We got the Raiders, we got the Broncos, we got the Chiefs, and we got the Chargers. Um, rate them from one to four, and also talk about playoff hopes for each of the four teams. Ooh, uh, I've, t- I've I've said before this AFC this AFC West division is very good, and I mm-hmm. think three teams in this division. I think three teams in this division can go double digit wins. Um, just like they're gonna be three in one year. Um, and I'm saying all four can, but I have to pick one that I don't think does, and. I'm gonna go, obviously I think Chiefs are gonna be the top. Oh yeah, just have, just have to stop to do it. Uh, but I don't think Chiefs are. Gonna, I think Chiefs are gonna be a low like not as not as like dominant. They're gonna be like a 12 win team this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
And that, I'm, just, I'm just kind of getting those vibes from it, especially when their divisions game. It's got so much better. Just right. This offseason. Then I got the Chargers. I'm not, I'm, I think the Chargers are just, like, better than the teams behind them. They had a crazy – uh. I, I, the the main part I'm like with the Chargers is you gotta win these games. Like when you come in these game these like late game situations and it's like a, only a touchdown game, you gotta close these games out or you just gotta. Because last year it was bad. They just every time it was a, every, felt like every game was close and they just never could close it out. You need that. You need to close out these games and hopefully Staley can, can get that Charger team on, on the right track. Because uh, this is a playoff team, playoff roster. It's just are they are they gonna get coached there and are they gonna execute on these late game situations? So I'm gonna have Chargers too. I think Chargers get like a ten and seven season, mm-hmm. and then, uh, it's very hard to say between these Broncos and Raiders. It really is. Uh, <laughs> that is extreme. That is extremely difficult to do. Because, on one hand, the Broncos have one a nasty defense. Like I look at this Broncos defense, and I say, like you say, it's a playoff team. Uh, the secondary is ridiculous. I mean, oh Randall, yeah. Uh, I mean. <laughs> I, I can't even explain, like, I'm jealous as a Tynes fan when I look at this uh, secondary. Like, their fourth guy can be our, you oh. know, number one. So. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's Cowboys fans. <laughs> you yeah. hate to look at that. Right, uh, right. But the problem with the Broncos is who's their quarterback for the mm. season. Because Teddy, Teddy B can be week one. He right. might not be week three. We know we don't know. So that's the whole problem with it. I think they're both solid quarterbacks. And I was praising for the Broncos to get Mitch Trubisky in free agency. I thought Mitch Trubisky was a guy that was going to come in and actually make this team like playoff potential because right. you you never know Trubisky. I mean, he's mm-hmm. learning from Matt Nagy, so I was if you're getting coached under Matt Nagy, it might he might be his fault. I don't, I'm not going to put a lot on Trubisky off the, after that, especially after I seen what he did with your Bills um, in preseason. Mm-hmm. The dude looked absolutely. Out there. He did. He did. And on the other side, you got the Raiders. The Raiders, I. I I've been told by a shout out to Moon. I've been told that they had a, they have a very uh, underrated defense this year. Not like not saying like where they're going to be top fifteen, but they're going to be a they're going to be they're way better than last year. But in my eyes, I don't think the Raiders have enough to be better than the Broncos. I think the Broncos defense is going to hold a lot. It's going to hold their uh, spot for that at least the third uh, place spot in the AFC West. And I might have the Broncos going like nine and eight, um, eight and nine, and then I'm gonna have the Raiders going like six, seven wins. Uh, Sorry, Raider fans, but I just yeah. don't think that they're they're there yet. And I think I I really like the Broncos team all around. My only mm-hmm. my just my big uh, problem with it is exactly the quarterback situation. Right, but and I we it's got, we gotta hope that it gets it gets solved. It has to be solved quick. Right. You got, if you you gotta make these these changes fast. You can't just be going midseason and say, oh yeah, 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 yeah. now now locks a quarterback. But yeah. I gotta put the Broncos third. You can't play musical chairs with quarterbacks. We've seen the Dolphins do it last year. They wasted a good year for the, for their defense, and I agree. The Broncos' ability to, to to rush the passer and ability to cover on the back end is going to bring some teams some problems. So I'm going to talk about the Washington football team side of things. Um, you know, Ron Vivere, um, you know, was an inspirational story uh, this past season. It was something, we, you know, we all uh, got to enjoy. And in the draft, I love what they did. They got Jack Del Rio, former Jaguars coach and and former NFL linebacker um, as their defensive coordinator. He runs that 4-3, and I think there's no better front four in the NFL than what the Washington football team have with Payne, Allen, Sweat, and Young. That that front four gets pressure with four. (laughs) Not too many teams can get pressure with four, and they create a lot of havoc with their four. So what did they go do immediately? We're all thinking – quarterback 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 what are they gonna do in the draft instead the Washington football team with the kid Jamin with Jamin they got Jamin Davis to play that Mike position that Luke uh, Keekly position and he's one of the faster you know linebackers in this draft he's a sideline and sideline um linebacker and he's pretty good in coverage so I love the move there and then they also got some got some help on the on the on the outside like the pickup of a Curtis Samuel, I thought was a, a great pickup for the Washington football team. It gives him uh, a, a, another deep threat and somebody like and you remember at Ohio State he was used a lot in a running game. I used to think he was a running back in college because he was used so often in a running game. So I look at this team, I look at the makeup of this team. Are we going to get good fits or bad fits, and can we deal? with good or bad fits. So Washington football team were able to make the playoffs last year with musical chairs at quarterback. Whether it's Alex Smith, Dwayne Haskins, like, you know, they kind of went through the realm 
uh, 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 Hanky. They went through a realm of having quarterbacks. So I look at this team, and I think this team should be able to build on what they were able to do last season. But it's all going to depend on fits. We got, you know, Gibson and McKissick at running back. They just paid Logan Thomas. This team got a lot of their nucleus that they had from late uh, last season. They was able to uh, retain Brandon Sheriff. So I like the makeup of this team. I like the coach. The coach fits the atmosphere, what it's really like in Chocolate City. Um, but the division that they're running, I want to talk about their division a little bit. The NFC East, a lot of people call it the NFC Least. Um, j- just looking at this division every year, it's, it's so hard to say he's going to be the winner. I like the Giants a lot, especially if Saquon Barkley can be healthy. Uh, healthy. They added a Dory Jackson. Cowboys are getting Dak Prescott back with the weapons they have on the outside and the running backs that they have, both Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. You're thinking that the Cowboys are going to make some noise. And then the Eagles... Um, getting Devontae Smith, Jalen Hurts seems to be their guy. I'm not sure how sold they are on him. So this division, it, it, it got some interesting things. And typically, you know, coming down the stretch within the last three games, every team has a chance to win a division. And that's how it was uh, last season. But I think Washington football team with this defense is the best team in that division. If, if, if you're going to play on the East Coast in the winter, you better bring a defense, and they're going to bring a defense. And they even got better on defense with the addition of John Davis. Um, some of my concerns with this team, like I said, is Ryan Fitzpatrick. I was surprised they didn't attempt to bring Cam Newton in for a workout. Jack, uh, uh, you know, Ron Revere and, you know, Cam Newton, they got history. You know what you're going to get from uh, Cam Newton. He has much better weapons, I think, on the outside with McLaurin and uh, Samuels than he did in New England where, you know, their receivers for the last couple of years couldn't get separation. And quite frankly, Tom Brady's last season in New England, he was much more of a game manager. Uh, and you could tell that in the playoffs when the uh, Titans put a foot up there, you know what? So um, I'm interested to see the the makeup of this division. If I was to rank these teams in order, I would say Washington football team, the Giants. I hate the Cowboys defense. The Cowboys <laughs> and then the Eagles. That would that would that would be my order. Um, but you know, how, how how do you feel about that? What would be your order if you if you had to dabble into this conversation for the NFC East as, as far as who would finish and what would be your one to four? This division so hard. It's it, so hard in the West because it's it, it's there's not a number one guarantee. Right. There's not a number four guarantee. It's right. just literally scrambled. It's, it's uh, just yeah. I'm gonna agree with you. Football team's number one. Uh, I think Fitzpatrick is gonna be serviceable for the season, and he's mm-hmm. gonna make them at least uh the top team. But I'm saying they're top team like at nine and eight. Right, like, right, right. Like, <laughs> yeah, like they're, exactly. They're not, they're not. This division is so. The, and now I'm going to put Cowboys second because mm-hmm. I know what Dak can do offensively. Last year, mm-hmm. damn, the defense was not doing anything out there. Right. They were out there just to breathe and <laughs> goddamn run or just run around the field, do whatever. Because they were they were allowing goddamn 40 points a game, it felt right. like. And Dak was putting everything he had, and he was getting that offense to, to, play, to play amazing, especially when he got a receiving core like, like he does with mm-hmm. C.D. Lamb, Gallup, and Cooper. Mm-hmm. So... I think Dak's going to make sure that this team is going to play very well offensively. I think it's going to be a little struggle to start off, but they're going to get going like later in the year. Mm-hmm. And they're going to at least get the team to, I would actually say there'd be a 9-8 and eight tie between the Cowboys and football team. I, 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 I love I think that football take. team. I think football team takes the division. I think it takes the division. So I guess it's time um, that we get down to these game picks. Um, I'm going to start with me and then we'll, we'll finish off with you. Uh, this this game, I'm I'm excited about both of these teams. I think both of these teams could do some major things, and both of these teams have to make up to even make a postseason run. It you know if you if you're able to bring a defense, we seen what Tampa Bay was able to do. They was able to rush the passer, cause havoc. They made Patrick Mahomes look like a Mitch Trubisky in a, a Super. Bowl. I felt bad for Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. So the Washington Football Team is able to do that. So looking at this game, it's going to come down to the line of scrimmage. Will Payne Allen, Sweat and Young cause havoc, or will that retooled offensive line for the Chargers be able to protect him and give Herbert the time that he needs? I got the Washington football team winning this one. I'm going to go with the score of uh, 24 to 20. It will definitely be a thriller. It'll come down to a last drive. Okay, last drive. I like that. Um, So when it comes to this game, to me, 
I think the Chargers are better than the football team. And mm-hmm. I wouldn't have said the Chargers are, are a playoff team if I don't have them winning this game because, mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm very confident on this team. Mm-hmm. And I think that the O-line is going it, to – it's, it's going to have a, not the prettiest game, mm-hmm. I would say. But I'm going to think – I'm going to say it's going to start off with a struggle. Purple might get sacked two times first quarter. Mm-hmm. Then – I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna lock in maybe second half, and then they're gonna give Herbert his time. My final score would be twenty-seven to nineteen Chargers mm-hmm. football team come just short trying to get that last uh, last drive of the game. Uh, wow! But it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good game. I I think it's gonna be a great one as well. Hey, for A Steezy, I'm Never KT. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. We are very interactive in the comment section. Make sure y'all check us out. Follow us on all our social media, man. And for R1P, we'll see y'all next time.